So this lens is the Zayas 55mm f1.8 prime lens for Sony cameras. And typically I use this lens in the low light scenario or for portrait photography and weddings and stuff like that. Never really took it out of the nature to see what it can do in the nature. When I'm doing landscapes or other nature type photography, I'm usually shooting on a wide angle lens. So I kind of wanted to challenge myself, take this 55 millimeter prime lens and only shoot in 55 today out in nature. We'll take some shots of the lake, some shots of the woods, maybe some flowers and stuff like that if I see any animals. I'm really curious to see what the results are in post. Now this is a very sharp lens, so that should be nice. I guess the only challenging thing will be is adjusting to shooting on 55 millimeters instead of 24 or 14 millimeters. All right, so firstly, we're gonna take some shots of the lake here and then walk in the woods back there a little bit and try and explore to find to see if we see any cool flowers or animals and fallen trees. And then we'll head back to the office, take a look at the photos, talk a little bit more about the lens and wrap up this video. Just some really quick observations here. It's definitely weird adjusting to a different focal length for nature photography because I'm gonna have to move back quite a bit to get the area of the photo that I want. Or we can just compact it in a little more. Let me show you. Right here, I'm trying to frame that tree to showcase the lake. All right, let me set this tripod up and see if I can do that. So, all right, so I have this F5.6 uh, ISO 160, one one hundredth of a second exposure. What we're trying to do is frame the lake using these bushes and trees. And I'm gonna focus on the bush and hopefully with my aperture at 5.6, a little bit more of the lake is gonna be in focus. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and take a walk up this trail a little bit and see what we can find. Maybe one of the trail itself vertical with 55. Here, let me show you. So I'm thinking just a vertical shot, kind of make it a little bit more dark. So it's like a pathway into the unknown. You don't really know what's down there. All right, so I do want this to be a little bit more of a darker image. So I have it exposed for negative 1.3 with an exposure time of 1 1 60th, an aperture in F2.8 and ISO 400. I also want to get a long exposure shot of the lake here. So let me just get this on a tripod. Just gonna take a few shots of these reeds here. As a side note, all the B-roll that you're gonna see in this video is also gonna be done with this setup, the Sony E7 IV, Zayas 55. The photos that you've seen, I haven't seen yet, so I'll let you know my thoughts on those photos when I get back. And of course, go over some of the tech specs of this lens. So I got a chance to look at some of the photos I took with this lens and I'm pretty happy with all of them. They look pretty sharp, a little bit sharper than my other lenses, which is I live in the Sigma family and my zoom lens happens to be a Tamron lens. It was however fun and challenging to shoot in primarily 55 millimeters because you don't have an option of switching between focal lengths like you do a zoom lens. And that being said, I wasn't really happy with the compositions that came out and that's probably because I'm primarily focused on shooting in 14 millimeter to 24 millimeter. So I'm just gonna play a few extra shots here to show you some other pictures I took while I was hiking back to my car. And there's one in particular that I really liked, which was the boat picture. And again, the shot was taken pretty far away. So I think the 55 millimeter came in handy in this scenario. Because if I was using a wide angle lens, I wouldn't have been able to capture the boat and the detail I had. So capturing my subject while still encompassing where the subject is with the landscape around it, turns out 55 millimeters ended up being a pretty good lens for that kind of shot. One thing I really like about this lens is how small it is. The profile of this lens can, I mean like look at it, it fits right in my hand and 
Uh, you've seen other lenses like the Sigma 2470, it's massive. And not only is it small, it's pretty light. That being said, another good use case because it is so small is if you have a gimbal and the gimbal doesn't necessarily handle a heavy payload, you might be able to use your gimbal with this lens if you're running into weight issues. Another benefit of having this lens is travel. I mean, it's small, it's light. If you're just taking one camera and one lens, this will handle very well in the light performance with a aperture of f1.8. It will be great for taking pictures of whoever you're traveling with. Let's say you're going on a family vacation to the beach and you wanna take some portrait shots of your family enjoying the beach. It's a great portrait lens. And then as well, it doubles down as doing anything else that any other lens would go. It just, you might have to back up quite a bit more than you normally would have had with a 24 or 14 millimeter lens. But with some work and some creative thinking, you can get around that just fine. Right now on Amazon, this lens is $1,000, which you know is modest compared to a lot of lenses these days. And if you buy it renewed, and on Amazon, I do recommend renewed products. I have a couple of renewed lenses. There's nothing wrong with them. You can get it to as low as $600, which is, you know, that's pretty cheap, especially for what it does and the quality of glass it is and the, how sharp the image is. And also for you videographers out there, I really like the focus ring on this lens. It's very smooth, it's glossy. I, it's probably, out of the lenses I have, my favorite focus ring. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed all those shots. Uh, please consider hitting that like button and subscribe to my channel for more camera related content. And hit that notification bell so you can keep up to date on all my latest videos. And I'll catch you all in the next one.